Okay, I wanna start this video by having you take a deep breath because facing a supply drop is tough and you are an amazing mother no matter how you choose to feed your baby. Your worth is not measured in ounces, all right? I know that, I know you know that, but it still doesn't take away the pain and struggle that comes with your milk supply dropping for no apparent reason, okay? There's a million reasons why this can happen, but let's talk about a few, where to start, how to figure out what's going on, how to fix it, where to find help, all of those things. The faster we can identify what's happening and fix it, the more likely you are to recover from the problem. So if you are like deep in this problem and you need help right away, please get on our schedule and schedule a call with us as soon as you can so that we can get you going and try and figure out what's happening. Again, the sooner we can fix this, the better you are going to be off in the long run. Really where we need to start is identifying the root cause. What's happening here? So it's time to put on your Sherlock Holmes hat and dive into solving this mystery. <laughs> okay. Now, spoiler alert, in this plot, there's no formidable enemy, right? Just some common issues that we're going to tackle head on. The first thing that we usually do is check your pump parts, all right? Just like your car needs a tune-up, your pump parts and your pump need regular checkups too, okay? So I'm actually going to put a little printable list down below for you. You can join our email list, I'll send it over to you. And that will kind of tell you how often you need to change your parts out and which parts need change the most often. The big ones are the valves or membranes, which are these little guys right here. But the backflow protectors, the soft silicone part is important too. Tubing can also make a difference. I mean, how silly would it be if your output was dwindling because you had a little crack in your tube? I mean, that's like the best case scenario. What an easy fix. <laughs> but that's kind of the first place to start is make sure that all of your equipment is functioning properly. Kind of a good standard rule of thumb is to replace all of those parts every 90 days. Although it's important to know what to look for when they might be worn out before that. They come in different qualities too, depending on where you get them, depending on what pumps you have too. And we deal with all this kind of stuff inside our program, but I'll give you the, the, hand, the basic handout down in the description. This is one of the easiest fixes and the best place to start. So first things first, check your equipment, check your pump, make sure it's working. The next place to start is to consider hormonal changes. And this is one of my favorite things to tackle with moms because pumping is not just about like plug and play what's happening on the outside of your breasts. A lot of pumping is inside too. Your hormones need to be working right and in sync to get the milk made and then get it out. And so anytime the hormones are disrupted, which can be by, you know, medical conditions, your period, pregnancy, stress, those kind of things send hormones hormones that don't play nicely with the lactation hormones. So that's something that we need to check first and make sure that we're not dealing with a bigger issue beyond simply getting the milk out that should be or already is there. We got to make sure that something else isn't going on. So let's talk about some of those just real quick there. If you're coming up on your cycle or you're on your cycle, it's pretty common to see a small dip, especially if you're pumping a lot, you'll notice this. If you're more on the exclusive latching end of the spectrum, you may not notice your baby can act in real time and fix problems that come up without you even knowing really, which is kind of cool. A pump can't do that. So you might see a dip and be like, what is happening? The world is ending, <laughs> but it might just be a temporary dip. There is evidence to suggest that taking a calcium and magnesium supplement can help lessen that and also can help make cramps and things better too. So that's something that we do. Obviously, always talk with your doctor before you start a new supplement or medication, but that's a pretty easy thing to add in. I know a pregnancy may not be something that you're looking for or hoping for, but most lactating parents, for the first while anyway, aren't having regular cycles, but that doesn't mean that you can't still be ovulating. <laughs> Just keep that in the back of your mind as an option. If your milk supply is doing crazy things and you're also feeling some other weird symptoms, maybe just pee on a stick real quick and make sure that it's not that. We've had that more than once where a surprise pregnancy has been the culprit of low milk supply. And stress, I know this one is so frustrating because what new mother is not stressed out, especially if you're a working mother, but cortisol and adrenaline are two hormones that do not play well with prolactin and oxytocin. I don't know if you can see it, but I've got 
my oxytocin and prolactin up here in the background. Those are the milk making hormones. We love those ones. But cortisol especially just kills it. It's hard. And so we have to look at the bigger picture. What are your hormones doing? Not only like, do you have thyroid disease or do you have diabetes? You know, some of those things that like really affect hormones and then we got to be extra careful but sometimes just high stress lack of sleep which again i know you guys are not <laughs> sleeping through the night i know this is a hard place to be and honestly this is my favorite thing to tackle with mothers is the holistic picture pumping is not just about what you're doing on the outside we're going to talk about some things you can do on the outside too but pumping is an art and it's more complex than just putting on a pump and going pushing play you know, hitting all your right settings, bam de boom there's the milk. I mean, it's it's a complex thing, which is why we're doing what we're doing and trying to help moms. That's why there's so many videos on my YouTube channel, why I have a whole program supporting moms, while I have a whole program training other professionals on how to support pumping moms. It's not always simple. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, find help from someone who specializes in what you do. Okay, hormonal changes, there's that. Okay, so that's internal. Now let's do external. Let's talk about evaluating your pumping routine. This, again, <laughs> is a lot, but let me ask you this. Do you remember what you had for breakfast three days ago? Probably not. I mean, I probably had a protein shake because I probably have that every morning, <laughs> but it's hard to remember and your memory can play tricks on you. You know what, I had an omelet. See, look, I don't even know. <laughs> that's so funny. This happens with your pumping routine too. So one of my favorite things to do is to take a minute and track your pumping sessions, all right? If you're also feeding at the breast, make sure that the app is tracking both of those because are you really pumping as much as you think? And this is hard for me because this happens to me all the time. Sometimes thinking about doing a task and like picturing like, oh, I need to do that. And then at the end of the day, I'm like, I thought I did that. No, I just thought about doing it. <laughs> this happens with pumping, trust me. So tracking your pumping sessions can be a really nice way to just take a snapshot of what's actually happening. I always like to like take a step back and look at the the schedule, you know, not the ideal schedule, what's actually happening schedule and see if we can find holes in there. See if we can find areas where I thought we were pumping for 30 minutes every session, but really we're only pumping for 11. It just feels like an eternity. And you just will be surprised what you can learn from that kind of data. Again, if you don't wanna look at all that data, just send it to me, right? <laughs> this is what I do. Me, I actually have a team of experts inside of our program who love looking at this. And that's why, you know, you can, invest in some help to really like hold your hands through this process and we love doing that but you can also do this on your own so don't be afraid to be your own detective and try and figure out where is this problem coming from one of my favorite tips actually which i'm going to share with you right now is pumping shorter and more frequently is always better than waiting and potentially skipping sessions so if you have a meeting coming up you're like oh that's right when i'm supposed to pump i'll just pump after it that's a bad idea. Even if it has to be a short session right before, always a better idea. So it's kind of like a power nap. It may not be as restful as a full sleep cycle, but it's better than no sleep at all. So don't get yourself into that trap where you're just putting off your pumping sessions for 20 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, because like you can make it up later. Just sneak in a short one earlier, right? Just don't play that game because you will probably lose. When you're looking at your routine and your schedule, also, Try and evaluate how you can take advantage of that huge prolactin spike that we get at night, okay? And this might mean pumping at night, and that stinks, but <laughs> sometimes that's what we have to do. It can also mean pumping right before bed or first thing in the morning. Again, it depends on your schedule, but biohack your hormones to work for you. They're already happening in your 24-hour cycle, so if you can maximize how you're pumping when you're pumping, it will really do you a lot of good in the long run. I know in the first month, maybe two postpartum, when the milk is just like everywhere and flowing and you have two, like it's just, it's everywhere. You're like, oh man, I'll never need to pay attention. Like I just, my breasts are waking me up. That won't always be the case. And this is why we often see a dip when parents go back to work. Again, because work is hard and it brings a whole new set of challenges and now we're relying a lot on a pump. 
But also your hormones are kind of leveling out at this point and your breasts may not be getting engorged and not waking you up. And it's just, you have to really keep on top of that supply and demand cycle because the hormone driven supply that you had in the beginning kind of starts to wane and your body's not going to make more than you tell it to. You know, it's like, you're not going to run farther than you have to in your marathon training. You're not going to cook more meals in the day for your family than you have to. I mean, why would you? And your breasts are the same way. They're not going to just make more milk just because, especially after that beginning where they figure out how much they need to make, how much you've asked for is how much they're going to continue to make. And I'll put a video up top on that decrease that we sometimes see when moms go back to work for more information on that. Another thing to check for is to consider your breastfeeding to pumping transition, all right? If you were latching exclusively for a long time and your supply was fine, and now you've started adding in more pumping and your supply seems to drop, that's pretty clear that this is a pumping problem, right? We're not getting the milk out that's already there. And if you let that continue on, they will, you will slowly stop making that milk because your body's just doing what you tell it to do. If you're not taking the milk out, it thinks you don't need it. So. I'm gonna put a video up top for you on low milk supply versus low pumping output, which will really dive into that scenario a little bit more because just because you're not pumping, the amounts that you're expecting or that you need doesn't necessarily mean that you have low milk supply. So we need to look at things like your flange fit, the type of accessories, you know, then the shields that you're using, the settings that you're using, the actual pump that you're using, what, you know, type of pump is it? This can all feel really overwhelming, especially when there's so many pumps on the market and it can be hard to find someone who knows about the specific pump and situation that you're using. I've already said this twice in this video, but I just can't help it. Like, this is exactly why we built the program that we did. You have me inside, another IBCLC pump expert, and we're just waiting to walk you through this and help you figure it out. Because I see that there is not enough information for you, <laughs> that you're struggling with milk supply. You're struggling to know what is normal, what's expected. And when you're combining feeding at the breast and pumping, it gets really complicated. All parts of motherhood are complicated, to be honest, but you're kind of combining two worlds together. And so how much milk can we expect to pump out when we're also feeding baby at the breast? How much is a problem? You know, when does low supply start being a concern for the long term? These are all questions that I have. Almost everyone that fills out an application to join our program mentions milk supply in some way. They're concerned about it. They think it's low or it is low or they don't know what to expect. How much should my baby even be eating because they've been sitting on the breast for so long? Like it just, it's a lot. I want you to know that I see you and I know this is hard and you are likely doing a really good job. <laughs> my heart goes out to you. And I love the mothers that I serve and that are here on this YouTube channel and that comment and tell me where they're at and what they're struggling with. I want to hear from you. I love this space. And I just, I want to give you a virtual high five because you're doing a great job. I'm glad you're here on this video and trying to learn more about how to keep your milk supply up to feed your baby. If I can help you, let me know. I'll also put another video for you here to help you investigate why you might be having low milk supply or low milk output. See if you can figure it out on your own. If not, let me know what I can do for you. Happy pumping.